Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. This is the first video of the new channel which will feature shorter format content, and today we're going to be discussing Hogwarts headmaster Albus Dumbledore. More specifically, we're going to be discussing Dumbledore's theft of fame from a wizard that most have never even heard of. Let's dive into it. Now, when most hear the name Albus Dumbledore, they think of the wise, powerful, and established wizard which served as head of Hogwarts school. But in reality, his prestigious reputation expanded far beyond the confines of Hogwarts school, having also achieved titles such as Supreme Mugwump of the International Confederation of Wizards and Chief Warlock of the Wizengamot. Dumbledore had truly been cemented in history as a morally good and unquestionably powerful wizard, and this is largely due to his single greatest accomplishment, defeating Dark Wizard Gellert Grindelwald in 1945 and effectively saving the wizarding world from destruction. After 1945, there wasn't a wizarding household in the world that didn't know his name. However, what many don't realize is that even before his victory of Grindelwald, Dumbledore had acquired a considerable amount of fame in the wizarding world. Dumbledore lived a long time, 115 years to be exact, and during his formative years, he was able to achieve a lot, beginning to impress other witches and wizards as early as the year 1893. In a matter of months, Albus's own fame had begun to eclipse that of his father. By the end of his first year, he would never again be known as the son of a muggle hater, but as nothing more or less than the most brilliant student ever seen at the school. And for the remainder of Dumbledore's studies, with his negative associations now a thing of the past, Dumbledore continued to excel, achieving every award and accolade imaginable. Rita Skeeter described this well in her book, The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. Now approaching his 18th birthday, Dumbledore left Hogwarts in a blaze of glory. Head boy, prefect, winner of the Barnabas Finkley Prize for exceptional spellcasting, British youth representative for the Wizengamot, and gold medal winner for groundbreaking contribution to the International Alchemical Conference in Cairo. Elphia Stoge, Dumbledore's friend, had something to say as well. He not only won every prize of note that the school offered, he was soon in regular correspondence with the most notable magical names of the day. Dumbledore had achieved a lot, and his name was spreading like wildfire. But his crowning achievement, other than defeating Grindelwald, that is, had yet to come. After the death of his sister, he decided to take a trip to France where he visited his old friend Nicolas Flamel. Flamel was a famed alchemist, and it was in France that Dumbledore studied the ancient art and science of alchemy under his tutelage. After an unknown period of time, Dumbledore returned back to Britain, and it just so happened that in this time period, Dumbledore became infatuated with the study of dragon's blood, specifically its uses, a relatively uncharted subject in wizarding culture. Dragon blood was the blood of any of the many species of dragon, and it had 12 uses, all of which Dumbledore discovered and subsequently published, earning him widespread recognition. Dumbledore was now world famous. Okay, now let's get to the juicy stuff. Despite Dumbledore's claim to fame, and his own discovery of the uses of dragon's blood, it turns out that another wizard by the name of Eivor Dillonsby had already been tackling the subject for years, and though Dumbledore had been credited as discovering all 12 uses, Dillonsby claimed that he had already discovered 8 uses before Dumbledore borrowed his notes. Actually, Dillonsby outright accused Dumbledore of stealing them, and he discussed all of this in Rita Skeeter's book, The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. Now, we know that Dumbledore hasn't always made the right decisions, or been the best person. I mean, for goodness sake, he almost plotted to take over the wizarding world, so I think it's entirely plausible that Dumbledore did in fact steal Dillonsby's notes. Dumbledore was brilliant, but he was also a bit of a ruthless cutthroat in his youth. The counter-argument to this, however, is that Dillonsby was totally full of it, and just jealous of what Dumbledore was able to achieve. Dumbledore's discovery of the uses of dragon's blood was after his departure from Grindelwald, so the argument could be made that Dumbledore was basically good from there on out. What do you guys think? Did Dumbledore steal fame? Leave a comment down below. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember... It does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.